Basically, I'm going to be talking about large-scale nuclear physics simulations that we do on Blue Waters. Uh, here is a list of people who are involved in this project. Those are uh, professors from Louisiana State University. Uh, we are lucky to have a, a large group of students and postdocs uh, who also get to work with Blue Waters. Um, and finally, uh, I would like to emphasize that we have a close collaboration with computer scientists from the Czech Technical University in Prague, and we also collaborate with a group of uh, Bill Tank from Princeton University. The world around us, uh, as we know it, um, from the silicon in our supercomputers to sunlight that supports life, it is all uh, internally linked to properties and reactions of atomic nuclei. So, for instance, the life cycles of stars, um, evolution of galaxies, it has all been shaped by nuclear physics, uh, by linking processes that operate in microscopic scales up to structures that span uh, across thousands of light, uh, light years uh, in the universe. Um, and so when you want to study nuclear physics, uh, you are interested in this region of the phases of quantum chromodynamics, when quarks condensate to create protons and neutrons, which then interact strongly uh, and together compose uh, what we call nuclear matter. The fact that protons and neutrons are composite particles, which means that they have inner structure, has one consequence, and it is that nuclear interactions are very complicated because it is a residual strong force and it's highly complex. So, for instance, we not only have two body forces, but we also have to deal with three and four body forces, and that makes our life a uh, whole, mod whole more uh, difficult. Um, here, I just uh, depicted the applications uh, for nuclear modeling. Uh, the first big area, of course, is astrophysics. You can see the chart of all nuclei that we know, along with processes that leads to their creation. Um, then another important field where uh, high-precision nuclear input is needed is uh, research on neutrino and cosmology research. For instance, studies that are looking for physics beyond the standard model are relying on uh, nuclear uh, information. Um, and then there is a little bit more practical application, which is the field of uh, applied energy studies. So uh, this would be National Ignition Facility in Lawrence Livermore. Um, I just shows uh, the philosophy of ab initio approaches to nuclear physics. Ab initio means from first principle. So one starts with a strong interaction between protons and neutrons. Uh, there exists a bunch of uh, families of interactions which are called microscopic or realistic. Uh, so once you have your strong interaction or model of strong interaction, then you take your favorite tool uh, in which you solve Schrodinger equation to get wave functions. And from wave function, you compute nuclear properties. But we don't end there. We can also use the information that we computed from many body dynamics and calculate uh, reaction processes. So we can calculate reaction rates, cross sections, even for most exotic species, which are not experimentally accessible. Um, and so here is the approach uh, which we are using. It's called ab initio no causal model. It is your configuration interaction approach, where you solve non-relativistic Schrodinger equation for interacting nucleons. Um, and the workflow is made up of three steps. First of all, you choose your physically relevant model space and basis that spans that model space. In the second step, you just compute matrix elements of the Hamiltonian. So at the end, you're going to get some sparse large matrix. Um, and in the last step, you apply Lanzosch algorithm to find few lowest lying eigenstates and eigenvectors. Um, or eigenstates and eigenvalues. The eigenvalues corresponds to energy levels in the nuclei and associated eigenvectors represent the wave function of the nuclei, which is then what you use in additional step where you take uh, those wave function and you can calculate nuclear properties that can be compared to experiment. Um, and also you can use them for uh, nuclear reaction studies. Um, and here is the key challenge of our approach. It is called uh, computational scale explosion. So here I depict for different nuclei the size of the Hamiltonian matrix we have to deal with as a function of your model space cutoff. 
which is related to three-dimensional harmonic oscillator excitations that you allow in your basis. Um, and this red line represents the current, uh, what current the best supercomputers in the world can do for you. So we are able to compute bases of size of 10 billion, or you have a Hamiltonian whose size is 10 billion by 10 billion, which is impressive. But what really kills you, and it illustrates this figure, is the number of non-zero matrix elements. So when we have only two body forces, uh, the number grows quite quickly. Um, at, at some point, you would spend entire aggregate memory. Uh, and in the end, you turn three body potential on, situation gets even more difficult because you get your, your Hamiltonian is getting more dense. Um, and at some point, you have to stop. Um, so this answers why the blue waters. So primary reason we love blue waters is because it has a large aggregate memory. Uh, it has a large aggregate memory per node and it has a, fi a very high peak memory bandwidth, which is all uh, that our calculations uh, need. Um, and our approach is not actually no crucial model. We call it symmetry adapted no crucial model. So it's because we put a little twist on the standard shell model. We basically want to go beyond this limit. And we can go that way if we construct our model space in different and more smart way. So we take advantage of exact and partial symmetries of many-body nuclear dynamics to actually construct a smaller model space that, however, contains all the necessary physics that you need for your task. Um, and so I would like to introduce our basis of symmetry adapted no crucial model. So our many nuclear basis is natural for description of many body dynamics of nuclei. So by the blue, num uh, blue uh, letters uh, signifies the quantum labels that we have in our basis. So first is the total number of harmonic oscillator excitations, which is related to Nmax parameter of the model space. Then um, we have also information about total intrinsic spin of protons, neutrons, coupled to total spin. Um, and here comes the interesting part. Uh, we are using group theory uh, to do the trick. Um, so our basis states are actually a reducible representation of the group SU3, uh, which are labeled by two integer numbers, lambda and mu. And they have very nice interpretation in terms of deformation. So for instance, 0, 0, basis state that has labeled by 0, 0 corresponds to atomic nuclei, this perfect sphere. Uh, when you work with uh, basis states that have lambda 0 character, that means we have a nuclei that's deformed like a cigar. 0 mu corresponds to deformed nuclei that looks like a disk. And for all other lambda mu, uh, you get realization of ellipsoid deformed shapes. And finally, our basis also has a total orbital angular momentum L as a good quantum number. So from this, you can see that our basis is highly tuned to describe quantum deformed system that rotates. And this is exactly what nuclei are. Um, so something about the code that we are using. So de we developed our own implementation of symmetry adapted no crucial model. It is a hybrid C++ for trend code that's parallelized using MPI, OpenMP hybrid approach. Uh, everything we develop is open source, so uh, you can uh, see that this is uh, our Git repository uh, that's uh, publicly available. And what's interesting is that 80% of the computational effort is spent on computing non-zero matrix elements. This is actually good because you don't need to communicate during this phase of calculation, so it's perfectly scalable. Only 10% of the algorithm is spent on the last step and we are solving Lanzos uh, algorithm. Um, this picture here just shows that we find a way how to distribute matrix elements between processes in a uniform way, so we achieve a good load balancing. Uh, and finally, these two pictures uh, show that we have uh, very good scalability, and currently we are using, for the biggest calculation, entire Blue Waters machine. Um, and this actually, this, this picture shows um, some first, very first result we obtain on blue waters. This is when you take into your basis all the formation. So on horizontal axis, you see the formation. Uh, the different color corresponds to different spin component. Um, and this calculation is a ground state of lithium-6 when we included all the formations and all spins, all colors. But when you look at the structure of the wave function that you obtain, you will find that it's highly dominated by one color, which is red color, which is one spin component. And you can see 
that the most important deformations or most important uh, geometry of nuclei is right at the very right side of the graph, which corresponds to the highest deformation. Um, and you can see that there is nothing that would contribute significantly to the ground state of lithium-6 at this point. So this means that you can now start doing symmetry adapted truncation when you take into account only red spin components and only the highest deformation. And this allows you to go to higher excitations and break that uh, limit of uh, Nmax uh, cutoff. Um, and this allows us to go to heavier nuclei, which are unreachable by other ab initio approaches. So this picture shows calculation uh, of neon 20, uh, which is heavier nuclei. Um, the complete model space is 4 to 10 to 12. Uh, that would be 400 or 4,000 trillions. However, we are able to take symmetry adapted model space that describes the physics using only tens of millions of basis states. Um, and we got a pretty good agreement with experiment. Then you, take in, you can take wave function and sh look as a microscope what is the distribution of matter inside of nuclei. And you can see that neon 20 is not a sphere, it's a deformed nuclei already in its ground state. And binding energies con are converging. Um, so this is another nuclei we did calculation for. Uh, it's uh, silicon 24, which is uh, important nuclei for X-ray burst nucleosynthesis. Um, this picture here just shows how we construct our model space. Um, so whatever is yellow is in our model space. So uh, you can see that we here pick only a few deformations and few spins. Everything else is excluded from our model space. So the complete space would be 70 billion. Um, however, dimension of our calculation was just 3 million. Um, and this is comparison of experiment and theory. And we were able to find some uh, states which are not experimentally observed yet because it's quite challenging nuclei that's uh, very unstable. Um, I would like to say that our student Grigor Sargsyan will have a poster that's gonna show other calculations of nuclear structure. And I would like to continue talking about some interesting applications that our modeling has. So this is the nuclear chart, uh, which shows uh, the stable nuclei that we know. Um, the gray color corresponds to nuclei where we know its mass. And the green color corresponds to nuclei that we know exist. However, we don't know what the mass is but unfortunately they have high impact or are processed nucleosynthesis. And this black color shows current state of the art experiments that are being constructed um, and the reach that they will have. And you will see that some of the nuclei still remains beyond the reach, even the most advanced experimental facilities. So the initial modeling is one of the way we can actually inform astrophysicists about the structure of, uh, of nuclei. Um, and here I show extension of the SA and CSM uh, or applicability of the SA and CSM across the nuclear chart. So we calculate reaction rates. Uh, this is the reaction that we are interested in. It's alpha capture on oxygen 16. Um, and so how we do it. So first step is of course use blue waters to get us as best wave function as possible. In this case, it was the ground state and one minus state. Um, then we calculate spectroscopic amplitude. Spectroscopic amplitude is just the probability that you find a cluster structure in your wave function that looks like oxygen 16 with alpha particle uh, spinning around. Um, and here I show the resulting spectroscopic amplitude, the orange color, uh, that's the ground state. Um, and this green line here shows the touching distance. That's when oxygen 16 and alpha particle are on top of each other, they are touching each other. And you see that in y-axis, we see probability amplitudes, and we see the highest probability is that alpha particle is actually inside of oxygen 16. So there is not, not much science for clusterization. However, for one minus state, which is this blue line, you see that the peak, probability peak, is already beyond touching distance. So we actually observing some uh, clusterization effects in neon 20. So once we have it, we can calculate resonance reaction rate, uh, feed it to astrophysical simulation. So this graph shows uh, the probability, no, uh, it shows reaction rate as a function of temperature, 
and you see a reasonable agreement with experiment. However, when we take this single reaction rate and we feed it to astrophysical simulation and calculate abundances of elements during X-ray birth nucleosynthesis, we see that how sensitive it is to nuclear reaction rate. So just little change in one reaction rate can give you orders of magnitude change in abundances in the X-ray burst nucleosynthesis. So this just shows how challenging our research is and that we have a lot of uh, space for improvement. Um, another thing we calculate on blue waters are response functions. They describe the response of nucleus on external probe, be it photon, electron, neutrino, and so on. Um, in the past year, our student developed a new approach, SANCSM plus Lorentz Integral Transfer Method. I'm not gonna go into detail, but here I just show the workflow and uh, you can see how we use blue waters in that calculation, in that workflow. So first, again, you start with calculating the best wave function that you can get. Um, and in next step, uh, you take your physical operator that uh, shows, uh, that, that describes the um, interaction with the nucleon matter. Uh, you construct a pivot that then you feed it to Lanzosch algorithm. And again, you use Blue Waters machine to diagonalize Hamiltonian using this pivot and find the Lorentz coefficients from your trigonal matrix. And at the end, you come up with nuclear response. And so here we have some preliminary results. Uh, we computed response functions for uh, neutrino studies. Uh, we are focused on oxygen 16 because it's a part of uh, Cherenkov jet detectors that are used for uh, neutrino detectors. Um, and here are our first preliminary results that show response functions for this nuclei. And now we can collaborate with our experimentalists in uh, LSU um, and they can take these data uh, and use them. And the main motivation is that nuclear input is the second largest source of uncertainties for neutrino experiments. So it has potentially high impact. Um, and we also did some code improvements last year. We focus our work on optimization of dynamic memory allocation. So in our code, we are using lots of C++ standard template library structures, which are doing a lot of dynamic allocations on heap, which unfortunately uh, drags our performance. Uh, SANCSM, do a lot of concurrent small allocations. So we have multiple threads that are doing more allocations. So first of all, we need scalable allocator. So our first step was malloc replacement. Instead of using standard malloc, we tested uh, TC malloc, J JC malloc from Facebook, and TBB malloc, compare which one has the best performance, and by far TC malloc is winning. Uh, and on top of that is actually decreasing the total memory footprint, which is something that we didn't expect. Um, next step that we tried was to use memory pooling because SANCSM is doing lots of allocation of small constant, constant size objects and it comes with large overhead. So now we request a big chunk of memory and we do bookkeeping ourselves um, and we are using boost library or boost pool class uh, in boost library, they take care of the bookkeeping. Um, and our future goal is to actually create our own in-house solution. Um, and this last optimization is a small buffer optimization. It's, uh, it's much more faster uh, to allocate memory on a stack than in, uh, on a heap. And so we are using special classes that are called small vectors that can, uh, for small objects, create data on stack, and for large objects, then they create dynamic uh, allocations on heap. Um, and this is the overall results of our code improvement. So we were able, actually, by optimizing dynamic allocations to increase the speed up of our code by almost factor of two. Um, and I show this for three different cases. And all three different cases are actually using over 22,000 of nodes of blue water. So that's when you uh, utilize the entire machine and you see that we can be twice as fast with the new code. And on top of that, we have, we see 10 to 15% decrease in uh, total memory uh, footprint. 
Um, and that gets me to summary. Uh, so the key challenges or why we, are, why we are studying atomic nuclei, obviously it's because it's a big deal. 99.9 .9 mass of the universe is a nuclear matter. Uh, it's an ultimate source of energy. Um, why do blue waters? As I said, it's the large aggregate memory that uh, is very favorable for our approach. Accomplishments, many papers in top journals. Um, we appreciate, I would like to say, we highly appreciate the help we get from blue water stuff. Uh, so four years ago when we started computing on the blue waters, our code, our legacy code, couldn't be compared to what we have now. We have several factors of speed up. And that was also thanks to paid program that ended last year and that wouldn't be possible without collaboration with the Blue Water stuff. Um, and shared data, yes, all our codes and results are publicly available and anyone is welcome to get a Git repository and play with the nuclear physics. Okay, thank you for attention.